Hi everyone, today I want to share a small Jackson's art haul with you and um, they are just literally I have taken them out, these lovely beautiful items out of the box. They still have the plastic wrap on them so I just want to share them with you and let's go ahead. Okay, let's start actually with brushes first of all. So this brush here, which I have two of them, it's the 10 Zero Quill. I also have it in a bigger size, just in case you were interested. This is size two quill. Yeah, so I've got these three brushes. Uh, this is a little bit too big for me, but I thought on a day when I will want to try some large, um, you know washes I will probably use this brush so it's the biggest one I have but these brushes the Tan Zero I use all the time I absolutely love them they're just my favorite brush and they're just beautiful to to work with so um, I decided to have a look and see what other brushes Jackson's do and actually they do a huge number of different brushes so I got two. So this is a pure sable spotter brush and the difference is it's a one so it's got a belly and although it's great for minute detail as it is tiny as you can see because of its belly it should uh, have a bit more water I do like using tiny little brushes for detail, but I tend to not do it really because um, they just are so tiny. As you can see, there is hardly any belly whatsoever that you just kind of don't have this great ratio of water and pigment and you keep on needing to go back and it just isn't too much fun but I'll show you in a white background what I mean by the belly and hopefully you'll see so this is a let me find you the equivalent so this is a one something similar to that I guess would be a three zero and you can see that the belly hopefully you can see it the belly is a lot thicker or wider on the spotter brush which is this one the black one uh, then on the regular so yeah that's the reason I got it because it's a sable brush it will be a bit softer so not as um, snappy as a synthetic one so I guess maybe that's another reason why it's supposed to uh, keep a bit more water in there now this brush is the same kind of style as this one however it's a raven brush and it's a three zero which is a very similar size it's slightly bigger than the tan zero that i have but uh, it's a very similar thing and this one is a synthetic mop brush so the the mop brush usually is made with real squirrel hair and if you don't fancy that idea then this is the synthetic equivalent and uh, I'm quite uh, excited to try it out because it's supposed to be very soft and feel like that so I will do it today in fact I will try it out let me just grab some water and where did that paper go okay so I've got some water I've got some paper and it's also a lot more affordable than the real mop brush with the real um, squirrel hair. So what I'll do is I'll just use my fingers to dissolve the glue in there. Wow, it does feel very soft. Feels really nice. So it comes to a lovely point when it's wet but it's definitely when you submerge it in water you can see how soft it is. 
Okay, so let's give it a go. Um, I'm just going to actually change the water because it's going to have that solution in here. And then I'll come back. Okay, I'm just going to move my precious Copic markers over there. And I will actually do a comparison for you because I know how much you are loving this brush since I have introduced you to it. Um, so let's do this. If you're interested, this brush here, which is the synthetic version of a mop brush, is 545 in uh, British pounds. And that is just, to me, that's just incredible. Um, that is a very good price. So let's see the difference here. So I'm just going to see what I can achieve. It's super soft. It feels beautiful. Okay, so now let me try the same thing with my, with the first brush, Jackson's quill brush that I fell in love with. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing now with my other brush and I'll probably do it, yeah, I'll try to do it just below here. So that's not gonna take as much water, obviously. Um, <clears throat> so you can see the difference already and then I'll just do a bit of this I mean, I could just continue here somewhere. So what I tried to demonstrate here is that um, you can see that there is more pigment here and a little bit more water over here. And that is because the pigment is sitting at the bottom of the brush and it doesn't have such a big belly as the mop brush has so therefore everything will go right in the start and then you just drag it out whereas with the mop brush you'll start lighter and the pigment kind of distributes evenly throughout with the line uh, this one is more kind of um, steady so here I was struggling to do just um, kind of long line because the bristles are softer here they are they have a bit more of a give so I could create the lines a bit more um, easier that way and also keeping in mind again they're darker than over here when I then started doing these um, brush marks they're very pretty and look beautiful again with the play of pigment and water ratio you could create uh, petals very easily like floral illustrations and leaves with the mop brush very um, easily um, so i'm talking about this brush here and uh, when it comes to the wash then you can see how very mild it is so we then um, have loads of moisture still left and i could keep on going and it is very light and when you compare that again to um, to the one I did here because I ran out of space you can see it's a lot darker again and when I did the uh, petal press by that point I already started running out of moisture so to speak and whatever pigment that was left it has gone straight to the end again and then I have this kind of weird um, pattern from the bristles basically pressing onto the paper and 
I mean, it, it's not a bad thing. It's just um, depends what you are looking for. And the mop brush kind of gives you that softness and um, kind of longevity of uh, water distribution it just it just holds a lot more of the water so if I show you up close on a white background again you can see that the belly is a lot thicker so it starts narrow on the mop brush so it starts narrow here and then it expands a little bit on the belly. Belly is here, middle of the brush. It's nice and thick, so that would be the thickest point of the brush. And then it goes into a nice point. So that's the mop brush. Now the quill brush has a exactly the same starting point as the belly, so it's nice and flat and straight. And then it goes into a point it goes into a nice point as you can see uh, but it's sort of more of a kind of elongated straight line into a point whereas here starting narrow expanding going into a point point so I hope that makes sense and that is what uh, gives you a different style when you're watercoloring now let's try the um this other brush, the stipple brush, or the rather the spotter brush. So I'm going to go into here and pick up the um, nice little puddle of watercolor and see how long I can go with that before I run out. So I'm starting to fade out and kind of started to do dry brushing around here okay so that's that let's see for um, kind of for detailing so if I wanted to color in this is as much as I would get which is a good amount and now I will demonstrate to you uh, roughly, what's this one? Would that be the same? I think I showed you this one, the 3-0. Yeah. So this is a 3-0 round. And you'll see how little water it gets. But let's see whether that actually changes anything when you work with it. So I'm going to start here. It still keeps going actually. So if I just continue. Okay, so it actually, for some reason, did more. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. And it still keeps going and now it starts to dry brush. Right, I have no idea why. But somehow it lasted a lot longer. Okay, so let's try doing detail work. Maybe see how that works. So I'm going to do over here just little dots like that. And let's see what kind of dot I can get on here. <clears throat> Yeah, so here I get little like bubbles of water because it holds more moisture, I guess. So that's so you get kind of I, I like this look a lot more with the maybe that's what it's designed for, maybe that's why it's called spotter brush. So this looks a lot more organic to me than these. Um, but in terms of drawing a line, I would say that it holds, yeah, again, it holds more water because you can see it's not as dark, uh, but it doesn't sort of last very long. Whereas the other one 
had more less water hence more darkness of the pigment but it lasted longer so you know if you want to draw lines this is obviously not for that there is um, another lovely brush that you could get which is called a liner brush if you if you're interested into drawing long lines but I just wanted to demonstrate how far it would go as well as showing you the um, water to pigment ratio and again it's done the same thing as the mop brush has, has, has done here, except for it didn't go as long. And for spotting, definitely it wins um, over the other brush. So I hope you can see it right here. And that's for the brushes. Now let's have a quick look at the um, Copic markers. Okay, so finally let's look at the Copic Chow markers. They are the smaller version of the um, Copic, I think it's called sketch marker, so the large one, which you can refill uh, with like the, the pigment and you don't need to throw out the actual marker. It's got a square barrel shape and these are round and smaller and I think you once you finish the marker you just throw out the marker and buy a new one and I guess that's why they're called chow. So um, basically what started this whole chow marker craze for me these are very expensive by the way however you can buy them in in a smaller pack um, like so these packs are not as expensive you can buy them separately like uh, just one marker on its own and you can pick out what colors you like and sometimes in a set like for example i wouldn't really use too many blues or greens or purples or something like that so i wouldn't really need to buy a whole set of them because they're so expensive i would be very uh, cautious about buying colors that i really need so and there is this set therefore that I found really useful which is the um, skin tone it's called 12 skin colors um, or Hautfarben if you're German and they are luscious they're really really beautiful and as you can see they range from um, sort of Caucasian colors to darker skin tones um, I wish there was one more dark skin color in between these two because we only have like a tan and, and a dark brown but I wish there was like a like a reddish dark brown if you know what I mean that sort of skin tone I think that's really would be really beautiful but anyway other than that you can I'm sure mix it um to that skin tone i also got this other um set which is the copic chow um warm gray tones and it is five plus one set so you get five colored markers and you get a copic multi-liner in uh, 0 0.3 so this one is designed to be waterproof and work with copic markers because some of the other liners if you use them uh, and you go with the alcohol marker over it even though it's waterproof you can sometimes smudge so this one is specifically designed for that and 0 0.3 is a lovely lovely fine tip which i actually have from another um, set i bought before i think some of the previous ones I had I don't remember which ones I've got five here and possibly they were a set as well I just don't remember now um, but yeah so that is that and they're super super beautiful even the gray tones I thought I'll go for that kind of um, a bit of a dramatic skin tone a little bit you know gray and I don't know I just wanted to play around with them but they are warm gray so they want they, they will kind of look they should look right I'm hoping so um, the colors you get here is W1, W3, W5, W7, 100 for the black one and the uh, liner in 0 0.3 as I said before. Now the colors you get here are YR02, 
R O two R twenty R thirty two E double zero E zero four E eleven E twenty one E thirty five E thirty seven zero and one hundred again for the black. So I'm doubling up on the black here, which you know I guess I can keep as a spare or give it to a friend. And also in the actual set, I'm doubling up with yeah, so these two are included in here but again i don't mind because you know i will surely use them up soon enough and i uh, have a just a second spare one so that's that i will do a swatch video separately because i didn't want this video to be too long trying to keep the videos a little bit shorter for this month and that is it for today i hope you enjoy this video thanks for watching and see you soon